Hey guys, it's Victoria and welcome back to Femhead. Today we're going to talk about cervical position and charting. This is not something I personally do. I don't chart my cervical position, but it is a third optional sign that you can do in conjunction with charting your basal body temperature and your cervical fluid. And so today I wanted to talk about some of the things you're looking for when you are checking your cervical position and how you chart that on your chart and kind of what it means towards your fertility. So your cervix kind of moves between two different positions, we'll call them. After your your period ends and before it starts you will notice that it is firm low closed and non-wet those are the descriptors given around ovulation they use the term show to kind of indicate what you're looking for so show means soft high open and wet so when it is firm and closed the cervix can be described as feeling like the tip of your nose so if you touch the tip of your nose right now that is what your cervix would feel like or roughly what it would feel like when you were not fertile but then your cervix becomes more mushy and soft around ovulation and they describe that as your lips so if you kind of go between the two you can see the difference between what you're kind of looking for and it's subtle in a way but it's also different and checking your cervix is something that you have to learn over time because you're not going to just figure it out one day because obviously it changes throughout your cycle. You can't base it off of just one day. So it's worth mentioning that you should never rely alone on your cervical position for determining whether you are fertile or not fertile when it comes to using it as birth control. You want to incorporate your basal body temperature and your cervical fluid. Those are two very important fertility signs that your body gives you and those should be the two main things you're charting but the cervix is a great additional third thing just for those who are curious or want a third sign or maybe those that for one reason or another can't rely on both temperature and fluid for example if you don't have a temperature pattern that shows an obvious temperature shift a cervical position charting could be beneficial in that situation okay let's talk about how to check your cervix so you want to start checking your cervix after your period ends wash your hands before and after you check and you want to check it around roughly the same time each day the most effective position to check your cervix is in a squatting position because this shortens the length of your vagina and it makes it easier to reach your cervix but some women Women prefer to do it on the toilet, put a leg up on the bathtub, whatever feels most comfortable for you. Just try to be consistent with whichever position you choose. You want to use your finger as a gauge. Make sure your fingernails aren't too long. Mine would be too long probably. Insert your finger and you want to remember the term show as you're checking your cervix. For the softness, you want to see if it's firm like the tip of your nose or soft like your lips or an in-between. They call it firm, medium, or soft. Next is height, where it sits in your vagina, whether it's, it's low, midway, or high. The opening, whether it is closed, partially open, or open. And finally, wetness, and this doesn't refer to like your actual cervix, but your cervix is what produces your cervical fluid. So you will notice whether it is dry, whether you're experiencing creamy or lotiony fluid, or egg white, watery fluid. Fun fact, a woman who has given vaginal birth will always have a slightly open cervix. So if you have given vaginal birth, you just kind of have to take that into consideration when you were checking your cervix. Instead of being kind of a donut hole, it's like a donut slit. And once you get the hang of checking your cervix, obviously the best time to check is when you start to notice fertile quality fluids. So when you start noticing the creamy and lotiony fluid, all the way through when you're checking, you can feel it kind of open and soften and then harden back up. So if you're charting it on a paper chart, such as the one from Taking Charge of Your Fertility, and it has a spot on here for cervix, people will use a dot or a signal to signify whether it is open or closed or how open or closed it is. They use three different, a dot to a small circle to like a small but a larger circle. The position in the box will show where it is sitting in your vagina that day. And then below that, there is a space for you to write F, M, or S, whether it's firm, medium, or soft. And that's how it's on a paper chart. If if you're using an app such as Kindara, which I'll just use an example because that's what I use and I understand how you can change things and how you can have custom data, you would have to add a couple data points, cervix open, cervix closed, cervix firm, cervix soft, whatever helps you remember it. And then you could go into detail a bit more into the notes or whatever works best for you. Once again, do not base your method or birth control method just on your cervical position alone. All right guys, that's just a quick little video to talk about cervical position 
because I've been asked about it before and although I don't use it I think it could be a very beneficial thing if it is something you are interested in let me know in the comment section if cervical position is something you chart how you chart it how do you indicate it on your chart and why you choose to chart it thank you so much for watching today's video give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's content don't forget to subscribe to Penpad for more of me and I'll see you guys in my next video bye